name um, new members as quickly as possible. As chair of the <coughs> Recreation Board, Mr. Patterson, have you had an opportunity to bring forth any names for the replacement of these folks that have resigned? Yes. You want to do them all one at a time? <coughs> Let's do them one at a time. If you can give me a nomination for someone to be appointed to the rec board. I make a motion to nominate Lou Torres to the Recreation Board. Second. I have a motion made and seconded for the appointment of Lou Torres to the Eddystown Recreation Board. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I make a motion to nominate Caitlin Riley to the Recreation Board. Second. I have a motion made and seconded to appoint Caitlin Riley to the Recreation Board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I make a motion to nominate Alan Reeves III to the Recreation Board. Uh, need a second. Second. I have a motion and a second to appoint Alan Reeves III to the Recreation Board. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Patterson, what I will charge you to do is to uh, get a meeting of the rec board, which I believe their regularly scheduled meeting is next Tuesday. Correct. Uh, with Mr. Quinn uh, being the former president of the rec board and Miss, Miss Quinn, Hope Quinn being the secretary treasurer, uh, you will need to have the rec board reorganized with officers. It is their responsibility to elect their own officers. So that could be first order of business um, Tuesday of next week. And you know, also this happening right at the time uh, where we're gearing up to start basketball season. I do know from past experience that you know Lou is very familiar uh, with the way that we operated previously and familiar with the leagues that we participate in. So um, you know, if we can get a report from you next month on you know the reorganization of the rec board and how we're moving forward with making sure that we have an uninterrupted program for the children of Eddie Stone, I'd appreciate it. Um, can I make a request? Sure. Um, can I have uh, Mr. Pisani draw something up for the new rec board to be responsible for all financials on August 28th moving forward? And the past uh, president, vice president, and other rec board members responsible for that before, uh, the, before the 20th, August 27th. And the Let's see what the previous rec board to hand in all. <coughs> Financial, Fine, financial or information or whatever. The new rec board, you're responsible for the fund that was in the rec board funds right now. Okay, so the borough, official borough record should indicate that the rec board that was just appointed that will be reorganized next Tuesday has taken responsibility for finances. From August 28th, 28th, moving forward. Okay, I got it. No problem. Thank you. Upcoming public meetings, uh, our next step, uh, we're out of the summer season. So on the 6th of October at 7 o'clock in Borough Council Chambers will be our Borough Council Workshop meeting. And the following Monday, the 13th of October, will be our regular uh, Borough Council meeting. I'm going to wait for this machine to pop up so we can go through the website real quick. So I will jump. Uh, to roundtable discussions. I will start to my right with Mayor Reeves and I will remind you of the uh, concerns you have with the ordinance on mini bikes. Just a prompt. Yes. Um, the ordinance on uh, mini, uh, mini bikes and motorcycles and ATVs uh, was uh, first adopted by 1975. The problem I have with it is the police department will have with it is the section 191-4 impoundment of the vehicle. It states that 
really what I think the, the vehicle from the person operating it to the barrel hall and then can retrieve it for uh, $50. I think that should be taken out or changed to where we would confiscate the, the bike and sell it or whatever. Uh, that discussion has come up. Council, what I'll ask is that you take an opportunity to review Chapter 191, the Ordinance uh, 435, which pertains to mini bikes and motorcycles. If we're going to go through the process of um, amending uh, the order, the ordinance, uh, we might as well, you know, look at all of the language uh, and, and work with uh, Mr. Duffy over the next month. You, you typically have to advertise that in the paper too, correct? Yeah. Yep. Uh, we'll, we'll work with him over the next 30 days. Uh, we'll have comments to you uh, by next council meeting, and then we can take the appropriate action of advertising and making the necessary amendments. Mayor Reeves, what else? What else you got tonight? <laughs>
and uh, you know, each month we'll give you the opportunity to uh, open up and, and make whatever comments you would like. Do you have any comments for this evening? I just wanted to say thank you for this opportunity, and uh, I'll be carrying on my time for senior council in the name of my white uncle Tom Renacci. to all the residents here for my outburst a little while ago. Now I've sat up here for this is my 13th year. For the past year and a half, two years, all I've heard about is transparency. Yet when I ask for somebody to be transparent, I'm in the wrong. Again, I apologize. Emma, congratulations. Um, Ed, congratulations. Thank you. And congratulations to all our new officers. Thank you. Councilwoman, Councilwoman Patterson. Um, I'd also like to congratulate Emma Trivet. Um, a thank you to Judge Mallon and Judge Turner. Congratulations to Chief Macheski, Officers Glenn, Golden, and Coyle. Also, I'd like to say thank you to the Torres, Taylor Riley, Alan Reese the Third, um, everyone else on rec. You guys are dynamite. Um, Basketball sign-ups are this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 6 to 8. Please come out and sign up. Thank you. That's more gross. I just want to reiterate all the good things, but a positive, uh, and wish everybody well on their job, and, and just pray that they remain safe. And thank you, everyone, for your patience today. Councilman Donahue. I'd like to congratulate Emma and all the officers in their positions. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you. Look forward to continuing to, to work together. Uh, congratulations to not only Officer Coyle and Officer Gleam and Officer Golden, but uh, their families as well. It was overwhelming to see the amount of support that was in the uh, auditorium this evening um, for those folks that uh, are now joining the police department. Congratulations, Emma, on your appointment as a junior council person. Uh, to address Ms. Jones's concerns about the formation of this Delco Youth Club, uh, or the D. Y C Gators. Um, I have. I'm saddened that Norm Quinn and Hope Quinn have decided that after 10 plus years of serving on the Recreation Board, that not only have they resigned, uh, but the the indication that was given to me when I did speak with Hope. Um, shortly after they tendered their resignation was that, um, you know, the, you spend a lot of time running the, the recreational programs for our children. It is definitely a, a commitment of time. And, you know, I, I, according to Hope, you know, Norm is taking on additional hours at work. He's got a second job. Um, you know, there's a lot of stress associated with you know, the sitting as, you know, a member of the, the Recreation Board. And there were the reasons why, that I was given, of why they were going to tender their resignation, which I respect those reasons. I certainly respect those reasons. Um, then to find out that that wasn't necessarily truthful, and that they wanted to start this Delco Youth Club. And... In my own personal opinion, anybody that wants to help the children, it's a, it's a good cause. Um, you know, however, in 
Norm's position as president of the Recreation Board. As president, he has the opportunity to be the leader and to guide the programs in the direction in which he believes is best to guide the programs. You know, we have a liaison from council. Dave Patterson is the chair of that committee. We have other council members that are part of that council committee. Danielle, help me out. I know you are a member of the, of the committee. Me. No, I'm not. Well, you were a member of the committee. Or... Would you mind yes. And, and Beth Gross, you know, it is council's responsibility to hear what the needs of the rec board are, whether they be financially, whether they you know need you know some support from council, and that's how the relationship is supposed to work. Is is that you know council isn't micromanaging the day to day operations of the rec board. You know it, it's we don't set you know, what the age groups are, we don't set what leagues we play in, we don't set, you know, what night of the week certain people play, we don't set how the day-to-day -day operations are run. That's the president of council, or the president of the rec board's responsibility. And, you know, in my opinion, Norm had that tool. Norm could make that rec board whatever Norm wanted to make that rec board. And I have given Norm my support on numerous occasions that said, you know, Norm, you're the leader. If you're stressed out and you don't believe the other eight members of the rec board are doing what the, they're supposed to be doing, you know, hey, throw up the red flags. Bring those concerns to council. Council makes the appointment. If, if, there's, if there's individuals that you don't think are carrying their weight, then, you know, hey, sound the alarms. And we're here to work with you hand in hand. And I am very disappointed to learn that he is starting this Delco Youth Club. I have made several phone calls to both Hope and Norm. I've requested meetings. Uh, did not want, I wanted to have their side of the story before we had something publicly. Um, you know, however, there is definitely a need to move on for the best interest of the children. You know, Eddie Stone has always had a very strong program for the kids, whether it be basketball, whether it be baseball, softball, whether it be a lot of the activities that we have for the holidays throughout the year. The rec board is strong, and the rec board will continue to be strong, and we're going to continue business as usual and put the program together. Sure. Do you want to comment or do you want me to finish up? Oh, you finish Let up me first. finish up. <laughs> From what I understand, and these are the questions that I will when I do have an opportunity to sit with the Quins, the questions that are going to be asked is, you know, number one, you know, what type of organization do you have? You know, have you submitted to get an EIN number? Is it an LLC? Is it an athletic club? How, how are you organized? Number one. Number two. What's the pool of individuals that you're going to be allowing to participate? Is this Eddie Stone residents only? Is this residents of Eddie Stone as well as children of the Ridley School District? Or is this all of Delaware County? The, the, the one flyer I have says it's all of Delaware County. What insurances do you have? What, what, you know, what, what, is, what, what is protecting our children? What insurance policy do you have that, God forbid, one of the kids get hurt, that they're going to be able to be treated properly? And then what facilities do you have? You know, we have a recreation center. We're able to open up Lighthouse Hall seven days a week and carry on the activities for our children. My understanding is, is that they do have a permit to use the Eddie Stone Elementary School or they've submitted a permit to use the Eddie Stone Elementary School. That permit has not been approved as of yet because the school district is asking a lot of the same questions that I'm asking. So, you know, I will continue the due diligence as president of council. I'll continue to try to reach out. 
to the Quins. I'll try to continue to figure out, you know, what, what the purpose behind this youth club is. Uh, however, I'll give the public assurances this evening that our recreational program is going to continue on business as usual. We've named new members of the rec board. We will reorganize and you know, we will continue to offer the same exact programs that we've always offered through the rec board. <coughs> Councilwoman Gross? I'd just like to make this comment, just not for me personally, but I had been on Barra Rec before when my kids were little on the rec. I wasn't a representative, I was a parent. And what I learned from that is just because you join Barra Rec doesn't mean you can just say you're on Barra Rec. That means is when they have a meeting, you attend. If you can't attend, you call somebody. When we have an event like the Easter egg hunt, Memorial Day, that means you come and help. It means don't come, you know, but still you're Barra Rec. If you don't apply yourself to the position, then you have no reason to question why people would say, where are you? So if you join Barra Rec, Believe me, it's work. You just can't say you're Barra Rec. You actually have to attend meetings, find out what's going on, and then help the people that are working the event. Helping with the eggs, helping the parents, you know. There's a lot of help that's needed on that day, Memorial Day. You need parents to, with this activity, you need to help kids on and off. So I'm just saying, you know, when people join something, you just can't say you joined. You have to physically show up and prepare the, the games or whatever and help them. You know, so that, that's just my two cents. Yes, sir. Um, if Councilwoman Thompson is stepping down from recreation committee, I'd like to sign, make a motion to uh, nominate Despo Tyshore to that seat. Tom Hetty. Sorry. The assignment of all of the council committees is the president's decision. We don't necessarily need a motion of council. It's, you know, I have that ability to be able to appoint whichever council members I believe would serve best on those boards. I have received a text message from Councilwoman Thompson. She has asked uh, through that text message to be removed from the Recreation Committee uh, as a committee of Borough Council. Um, that is, that request is acceptable to me. And I do agree with you that Despo Tadashore would make a good replacement. So uh, our council committee uh, records will be updated to reflect that uh, Councilman Dave Patterson is the chair and uh, Councilwoman Gross and Councilwoman Tadashore are members of council that serve on that committee with you. Very quickly before we adjourn, we are hours away from the launch of the new Eddystone website. Um, just to give everybody a preview, I've put it up on the screen. Uh, the way that it is organized is the home page will give you upcoming events. So this way here, if you've got a question of when a borough council meeting is, it'll be right on the website. When we put the information about the um, flea market for the fire department, it will be in that left column on the website. When we put the information up about the cow pie bingo, it'll be up there on the website. When we have basketball sign-ups, it'll be up there on the website. When we have baseball and softball sign-ups, it'll be up there on the website. So everything will be uh, at your fingertips. Give you a quick overview. Uh, where is Eddystone? We give a geographical location. We give information of where we're located in relationship to the major airports. We give information about the public transportation. We give driving distances from where we're at with major interstates. We also have our legislative representation on the where is Eddystone. News. We will be putting a news blog together and we will have real-time information on the news blog so uh, for this evening we have already put in that three full-time patrol officers have been appointed and <coughs> District Judge Phil Turner administered the oath of office as Paul Glean, Michael Golden and Shane Coyle were appointed the full-time patrol officers with the Borough of Eddystone Police Department. Mr. Glean was a 2011 graduate of Delaware County Police Academy and he has served in the Infantry Division of the Pennsylvania Army National Guard from 2008 to 2014. He was a part-time officer with the Eddystone Police Department since 2012. 
Michael Golden's a 2009 graduate of Delaware County Police Academy. And Shane Coyle is a graduate of, a graduate of Williamson Trade School and has an associate degree in machine tool technology. He's been a part-time officer in both Falcroft and Aston. So it gives that information about the folks that we have in our employ. We also have got information that's already up on the website that we can read about the uh, naming of our new police chief. Congratulations, Ed Bicheski. And you can learn about when Ed Bicheski joins the police department and what his educational credentials are. Uh, we'll also keep everybody informed of what's going on with the canine unit, um, as well as the promotions of uh, Lieutenant Elliott and Sergeant Matt I'm sorry. What did I say? A Lieutenant Pretty. It's been a long day. Lieutenant Pretty and Sergeant McNamara. I know. Administrative staff. We've also got a lot of very helpful information about our code enforcement as it pertains to both residential work and commercial work. Recognition of our public work staff. Good group shot of our police department. And secretary. Oh, Kath, that's a good picture. <laughs> a collection of all of our elected officials, as well as what committees they serve on and email addresses. And at this time, I will let all of council know that when this does go live, your email address is your first initial, your last name, at eddystoneborough.org. If you have not already taken the opportunity to set up your email, please do so at this time. If you have lost the instructions that Stevie G has sent you, I will resend them. But when this goes live, a resident that wants to contact a borough council member will click on the send an email and it will go to your borough email address. Some good photos of our emergency services to our fire department and let us not forget what has become a very active ladies auxiliary. And this is actually my favorite part of the website is that We have over the years named some of our parks and fields over residents that you know have made a difference uh, in the borough. Um, those who have just moved in don't necessarily know uh, who Nancy Scott, Scott Cowan is, or who Bessie Barbara was, or who Dorothy Taylor Goddard are. So we've <laughs> taken the opportunity to reintroduce the impact that these individuals have made on the community so that the children of this generation understand what these folks have done in their lifetime to make a difference in Eddystone and why members of council would have taken the opportunity to name a park or a field after those individuals. We've not named the park in the village, but we do have the Don Marion Field, which is behind Lighthouse Hall. And the other favorite part for me personally is the information that we have about our Eddystone Elementary School. And we do give a series of senior awards out 
the Eddie Stone Fitty Basketball Award, the Eddie Stone Business Community Award, the Eddie Stone Homecoming Award, which I have to thank Ms. Machesky for going into the jewelry box and getting the pendant from the old Eddie Stone High School, which made it up onto the website. Uh, do you have a class ring? But also, the, those individuals that prematurely passed that we do have scholarships and awards named after. Uh, Susan Cowan DiMatteo Memorial Award, the Joseph Hughes Memorial Scholarship, and the Andy Cochran Memorial Scholarship. So I do thank these families for reaching out to the borough, making sure that we've got photos of their loved ones, and you know I, I think we've tastefully uh, captured what these individuals have done to make a, an impact in the borough. So uh, please be on the lookout for uh, www.eddystoneboro.org. It is packed full of information. Uh, if you've got a question on the number of trash cans that you're allowed to have outside your curb, the answer is four. If you have a question about the total weight that you can have in your trash can, the answer is 50 pounds. And the reason I know these is because it's all on the website. So please take an opportunity in days to come to, uh, to look at the website. And this document is only as good as the information we feed it. So I will give you a commitment from the Borough Council table that uh, you know we will continue to update this uh, on a weekly basis. We've already uh, taken action. We've got Mr. Wilson has uh, agreed to do what I call curating, uh, but administration uh, worries want to get the blogs up and running, get to make sure the calendar's up to date, make sure that we upload the videos, make sure that we upload the meeting minutes for all the borough council meetings. So it will be a very, very useful tool for us that's going to serve us well in Eddie Stone for years to come. I have one last question. Yes. Um, I asked you who made the decision to change the locks at Lighthouse Hall uh, eight weeks ago without notifying the fire wreck or giving them keys? Actually, uh, I was asked since we were having the locksmith down there to relock because we did not have the key for Mr. Sievert's room. Um, I was asked to have uh, the locks switch so that we could get into the Sievert room and why the locksmith was down there to have them change the locks. The locks were changed and the locks were not locked. You could still get in if you used your key box. Was any other Well, they don't return your phone call. I'm going to I'm going to step in and I'm going to say I made the decision to change the locks. I also made sure that Councilman Patterson got the information to make sure that the key fob system was working, and that you know I have had a relationship with the Quins, and you know a simple phone call would have resolved the situation as opposed to someone taking drastic action like tendering a resignation. I certainly hope that Norm Quinn, Hope Quinn, and Christine Cogger did not resign because of the fact that the locks were changed on, on Lighthouse Hall. And they were not given cake, however, it was given cake. It was summer cake. Okay. Point made, that's all. I don't understand the point. My point is, why would you not give the president of recreation keys? Because he doesn't call me back or text me back. Were you down at summer camp? Yes, I was. Were you, did you see Hope Quinn down there? Yes, did and I said hi to her, and she just gave me like a smudge. So what I did is I left the five keys available. Their, their five keys still operated and functioned. Once again, I certainly <laughs> hope that we do not have the tender of a resignation of three rec board members, including the president and the secretary and treasurer, over something as... <coughs> and I'll give you that any further and say that if you turn around and say that you're the rec board liaison and you're on the rec board, that it was a political move to change that. No, it was a political move to have you doing both at the same time. Dave, you don't want me to bring up what I was going to bring up. Where, where hey, is I your, where is your uh, camper part? Is it parked in an illegal spot, Dave? What, the, what, the, what, what is it? I'm asking that as a question. I am bringing that up what does, what does because he's camper? on council and he should abide by the rules of the town. That's um, a personal question. No, 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 no that's fine. That's actually fine. That's actually fine. 
Councilwoman Thompson, before I even made the purchase of my RV, I went to Chief Machewski. I've looked up the ordinances. I was not allowed to put a trailer back there. I was only permitted to put a motor vehicle back there. So that's why I purchased what I purchased, and it's parked there. I did request the permission before I made the purchase. Please ask. When they have one joint, Do we have any other business before council this evening before I make a motion to adjourn? May I have a motion to adjourn, please? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>